It is January, which means I have to recall how Thailand ruined this month for me. Again. Kids, you had your fun. Now, it's real men's turn. The AFF Cup, the world's most prestigious tournament, where instead of players like M. Paypal, Pessi, Christopher Panaldis, and Kaoru Mitoma, you have stars like Super Saiyan Tiratong, Keisuke Honda as coach of Cambodia, Billy Kay of Laps, Viet player number 526 who was overvalued by his agent and is now facing the consequences, Tokyo Verdi's own social media engagement machine. Oh, no. Sergio Aguero, and of course, token white guy. Jokes aside, the AFF Cup is a tournament that is based in the Southeast Asian region, or as I like to call it now, the Rice Balkans. Thailand and Vietnam were favorites going into this tournament. The Thais didn't have their best team, but their coach, Mano Poking, is a genius in the region. Then you had Dark Horse picks like Indonesia and Malaysia. Indonesian was on everyone's radar though, because they were led by former coach of South Korea in 2018, Shin Tae Yong. Indonesia was also on everyone's radar, because some of their fans are incredibly relentless on social media. Some of them are like Dallas Cowboys fans from a realm worse than hell. But off topic for a second, did you know that Indonesia has 1,340 recognized ethnic groups? Yeah, I didn't either. After those two dark horses, you had Diaspora FC, the Cambodians, and the Singaporeans who had potential to pose a threat. Especially Cambodia, who are currently on the rise, with their two Japanese coaches and young forward Siang Chantia. Myanmar and Laos are just kind of there. Myanmar is currently having other issues, and Laotian players have been match-fixing for years because their federation doesn't compensate them enough. But how about we congratulate Brunei, because they qualified for the AFF Cup for the first time since 1996. They'll have the honor of being annihilated by quite literally everyone. Anyways though, let's begin the review. We'll start with Group A. To open up the AFF Cup, we had Cambodia versus the Philippines. The Angkor Warriors took an early 2-0 lead, however the Filipinos erased that advantage after some abysmal keeping. But then the Cambodians shockingly retook the lead four minutes after the Filipino equalizer and went on to win a fantastic tournament opener. Later that day, Thailand played Brunei. And it wasn't even close. Next was Indonesia versus Cambodia. Indonesia struck first blood, however the Cambodians equalized not too soon after. But then in the 35th minute, Witan Suleiman would seal the deal for Indonesia, earning them all three points. Later on in the tournament, the Filipinos destroyed Brunei. But hey, at least this time they scored a goal. Brunei on match day three would not experience the same kind of bliss though. Instead, Indonesia would feast on whatever was left of them. Thailand and the Philippines would play that same day, and the Thais would take care of business winning 4-0. This would also be the end of the road for the Filipinos. The heavyweights of this group then played against each other, Thailand versus Indonesia. The match was in Indonesia, and if you know anything about Indonesian footballing culture, some fans can be a little... violent. 38 minutes played though, the Thai keeper makes a grave mistake and Indonesia makes it 1-0. <laughs> The nation of Her Majesty, however, would redeem themselves with the penalty later on. Alas, after years of a promise of a new era, we were finally seeing the fruits of a- On the final day, Indonesia defeated the Philippines, which sealed their spot in the next round as Cambodia were officially eliminated. Thailand later that day would take top spot via goal difference in the group after defeating Cambodia 3-1. Then there was Group B, where you'll find the glorious Vietnamese team. This would be head coach Park Hung So's last ride with the national team as he was leaving right after this tournament. Goalkeeper Dang Van Lum was an essential part of our run throughout the second round of World Cup qualifiers. Unfortunately, he had some setbacks in 2021 and wasn't able to play in the last tournament. But now, he was back and ready to man the sticks for this tournament. In defense, you had players like Kue Ngo Hai, Bui Tien Zung, and finally 23-year-old Doan Van Hao. Van Hao, like Van Lum, was pivotal to Vietnam's qualification successes in the second round, and his deliveries and crosses would be essential to Vietnam's attack. In midfield, there's defensive anchor Nguyen Hoang Duc. He plays deep and adds another shield for the defense, allowing our other midfielder, Do Hong Zoom, to freely roam around and help the attack. Nguyen Van Quyet can also provide attacking support off the bench. Our star player, however, would be Nguyen Quang Hai, arguably Southeast Asia's best technical player. Recently though, he made a move to League 2 side Po, where he's barely played, so that could pose a bit of a problem in terms of consistency. Up front you have two options, Nguyen Tien Ling, great in the air, good positioning, and semi-clinical 
and Pham Duan Hai. Not a great finisher, but is very hard working off the ball. His play style sees him play deeper, which provides the midfielders another outlet. Vietnam's campaign started with them crushing Laos. But don't be mistaken, beating Laos means as much as beating Chelsea this year. Quang Hai, however, did get injured in this match early. Luckily though, it wasn't too bad, and he'd be back relatively soon. That same day, Malaysia barely escaped a Myanmar side that deserved a point. Singapore a few days later would kick off their campaign against Myanmar. The Burmese took an early lead in the 34th minute. Singapore then responded with two of their own at the end of the first and beginning of the second half. Myanmar would not let go that easy though, as Mong Mong Lin scored his second of the day. However, Singapore with some Brexit football restore their lead and hold on to get the victory. In the next match day, Malaysia would score more goals than Laos has letters. Two days later, Singapore would score two of their own against the Laotians. So yeah, Laos was practically eliminated at this point. Then came Vietnam versus Malaysia. And Jesus Christ. 15 minutes in, a loose ball is being protected by Phan Hao, who then brutally elbows a Malay player in the box. Nothing is called, and to make things even worse, there is no VAR in this tin pot tournament. Then 20 minutes played to add more salt in the wound for Malaysia, Nguyen Tien Ling scores for Vietnam. Throughout the rest of the first half, the Tigers of Malaya would attempt to find the equalizer. However, Dang Van Lum was in godlike form that night. Then came the 58th minutes, where this game got messier than the AFF Cup's hand on Instagram. Doan Van Hao and Azam Azizi are seen battling for a ball near the touchline. They both crash into the ad boards and a few moments later, a penalty is awarded to Vietnam. Not only that, but Azam Azizi sees a red card. What is going on here? Quang Up High converts at the spot, but everyone is still trying to figure out what the hell just happened. All the while on Facebook, it is all out war between the Vietnamese and Malaysians. But then finally, we get the answer. Basically, Azizi appeared to have kicked Fan Hao's head while they were both tangled up. And since the ball had stayed in play, it was a penalty. The Malaysians after the goal pretty much lost all hope, and Huang Duc in the 82nd minute would put the game to bed. Now the match had came to an end, but on Southeast Asian Facebook, it was only beginning. Malaysians across the platform, and also Instagram as well, infiltrated every Vietnamese account you could think of. And Van Hao had become public enemy number one with many Malays calling him a kung fu player. All the while, Vietnamese fans were posting memes taunting the Malaysians for yet again losing to Vietnam. Beat me. Malaysia! Malaysia violent! <laughs> My favorite moment of that entire war though, had to be this account. For context, Ryuji Sato was the referee of this match, and a day before, he posted a good luck message for Vietnam on his page. Malay saw this post throughout the match, and having seen some of the questionable calls, cried match fixing and mobbed the account. Little did they know, that account was a parody. It was created back in 2021 when Ryuji Sato was the official of a pivotal qualifier between Vietnam and Malaysia, where he called this obvious dive as a penalty for Vietnam. Since that day, the account has been trolling more and more unsuspecting Malaysians, and it honestly never gets old. Going back to the match though, that score did not reflect how Vietnam played. Our defense was so shaky, and if it wasn't for our godlike keeper, uh, we would have been done for. The next match day saw two eliminated teams in Laos and Myanmar battle it out. In the end, the match ended in a 2 all draw after a brilliant last minute free kick from Mong Mong Lin. Singapore then played Vietnam, and yet again the Vietnamese would show off how bad they are at breaking down a low block. Then on the final match day, Malaysia would kill off Singapore to advance to the next round, while Vietnam would defeat Myanmar 3-0 to win the group having not conceded a single goal throughout the stage. The knockouts for the AFF Cup work a little bit differently. Both the semi-final and final are two-legged ties. So Group A winners Thailand would play Group B runners-up Malaysia, Malaysia for the first leg, and Thailand in the second. But we go into the first leg, and why don't you look at that? Our glorious green lasers are back. Thailand were putting on an attacking show with their fluid movement and piercing passes, but it would be Malaysia to score through Faisal Halim. The nation whose federation's initials are FAM would then hold down the fort for the next 80 minutes and go on to win 1-0 despite having just 27% of the possession and a quarter of Thailand's shots. However, Malaysia would not be able to withstand the Thai attack in the next leg. They were shot down from the sky just 19 minutes in and then were reminded of the cruel fate of reality in the second half. So Thailand, with a 3-0 win, advanced 3-1 on aggregate to their 10th AFF Cup Final. Then there was the other semi-final matchup, Group B winners Vietnam versus Group A runners-up Indonesia. Already, the two nations' fan bases were at each other's throats, so this tie's mere existence 
only made things worse. The first leg would be set in Indonesia, where the Garuda team pocketed some of our key players, including Huang Duk and Van Hao. As a result, Vietnam were incredibly incompetent with the ball. The team was worse at stringing passes together than Zach Wilson is at finding wide open receivers. Now Indonesia, on the other hand, were thriving. Vietnam's midfield players were basically lost, which allowed Indonesia so much space to attack into. They had a few dangerous opportunities throughout the first half, but their finishing was more non-existent than the walkability of Houston. In Texas. In the second half, though, Vietnam did a much better job at suppressing the Indonesian attack. How did they do that? Simple. Every Vietnamese player turned into pre-2022 Xhaka. Anytime an Indonesian player had just a tiny little molecule of their toe touch the ball, they'd be bulldozed on the spot. Oh, and then there was public enemy number one of the entire region, Doan Van Ha, who in the 55th minute made this tackle and got away with just a talking to. And then three minutes into stoppage time, he's already created chaos. He decides to create even more by missing the ball entirely trying to clear it out in the box. But again, this menace to Southeast Asian football gets away scot-free. So after 90 minutes, this chaos-filled match would end in a nil-nil draw, all the while Southeast Asian Facebook was an all-out war again. Then came the second leg three days later at the prestigious and very clean Mi Ding Stadium. And from the get-go, you could tell this was a very different Vietnam side. Three minutes played, Do Hong Zong plays a beautiful ball to Nguyen Tien Ling, who finishes calmly. While the Vietnamese were continuing to carve through the opposition's defense, the Indonesian players had Van Hao's mere existence living rent-free in their heads so much that they forgot they were even playing football to begin with. Then early into the second half, Tien Ling gets his brace and seals the deal. Vietnam win 2-0 and advance to the final for the first time since 2018 while Indonesian fans were coping heavily. I mean, when your own federation's Twitter is having a meltdown, you know it's bad. But to be honest, I don't really feel bad for most of the fans. They talked so much shit before and during the match. So honestly, cope, seethe, mold. Alas though, we have reached the final of this chaotic tournament. It's a classic matchup as well. Thailand vs Vietnam. The last time these two met in the final, it was 2008, where Vietnam won their first ever title. Thailand, as mentioned before, didn't have all their best players, but under the guidance of Mano, they've grown with every match. Vietnam has also been growing with every match, but they are nowhere near where they should be. If we wanted to have a chance to win our third title, we'd really need to pick it up. And so, the first leg would be played in Vietnam, Park's very last home match. Both teams had good efforts to start the game, then 23 minutes played, Quang Ao Pai sends first class straight to Nguyen Tien Ling, whose diving header finds the back of the net. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're actually gonna do this. Vietnam body! Vietnam body! Oh, over the top. Could that have been squared? It doesn't matter! 2008. That's come through. Oh, that's another great finish! So at 2 0 down with a little under 30 minutes to go, we needed to find an equalizer especially since Thailand now had two away goals. However, all we got was Vietnam failing miserably at making chances happen. We do the classic passing sequences between the midfielders and defenders, but when it came to the final ball, yeah, there was more of a chance that Black Lagoon Season 3 would be announced than a Viet player in the final third receiving a ball. Although, to credit them, the Vietnamese never gave up. And in the 87th minute, Vu Van Tang unleashed fury with his right foot and gives Vietnam the equalizer they needed to stay alive. With the aggregate score at 2 all, it was still anyone's title to win in the second leg. However, alongside having the return fixture at home, Thailand had another slight advantage thanks to their away goals. No worries though, because this was Park's last game for Vietnam, and we were about to see match. Why is Tuan Aang starting over Quang Hai? Oh, the shot is on, Tiraton! What a brilliant <laughs> goal! After that goal, we now needed to score two to win thanks to that away goal rule. But as you've seen from our attack in the past, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Quang Hai coming on for Tuan Ang in the 38th minute helped a smidge, but our creativity and invention was still not enough. All Thailand had to do was sit back and watch us miserably fail at doing anything with the ball. And it's times like these where I kinda question Park's tactics. His pragmatic and defensive approach is genius, don't get me wrong. 
but we need two goals. At times like this, you want to push up farther and be a little more aggressive. You know, something that we saw against Indonesia. We, we need more of that. And also, not once did I ever see Nguyen Van Quiet play a single minute in the final. And A, he's a veteran, and B, he would have provided even more creativity. Something that, you know, we needed. So yeah, our run ends at the hands of Thailand. Again. Congrats to Thailand. They deserved it. Yada yada yada. F oh, what do you know? It's a it's a brand new day, as you can see from the uh, slightly brighter skies. Yeah, I just wasn't able to record all of this in one go. But before we conclude, let's just quickly go over some player performances in this tournament. Nguyen Tien Ling becomes the first ever Viet player to be top scorer in the tournament. And just look how happy he is about it. Dang Van Lum was immensely important throughout the tournament as well. Van Lum went six straight matches without conceding a single goal in this tournament. Duan Van Hao was another player who missed the last AFF Cup, and he really showed out for the most part. His long balls into the final third posed many threats for defenders, and his deliveries into the box were better than any other player on the team. Looking at our midfield, I wasn't exactly that impressed, honestly I think we were a bit underwhelming. Especially Quang Hai, who had his moments of brilliance, showed off tricks that he learned in France, but was also very inconsistent throughout the tournament. And the same can be said about Huang Duk. There were times when he looked really good, but when it came to facing up against the bigger teams, he kinda just disappeared. Phan Tuan Hai, despite not scoring once, I thought did his job pretty well. Again he's more so that forward that doesn't really score. He drops back and provides another outlet for the midfielders. And on top of that, he also can lure out defenders, that way it creates space for someone like Tian Ling. Also shouts to Nguyen Tang Bing. He didn't play as much as the other defenders, but when he did, I thought he performed really well, and at just age 22, there's a lot of promise with this kid. I say kid, he's literally the same age as me. Now before I end this video, I did mention that this was Park Hang So's last tournament for Vietnam. And it's sucks that it had to end this way. I would have loved to see him lift that AFF Cup one more time before he went, but it does not tarnish his legacy whatsoever. When Park was appointed back in September of 2017, he quickly established himself as not just a coach, but a father figure to a young core of sparkling Vietnamese stars. His hiring was around the time that Vietnamese football was trying to rebuild overall after the many corruption cases and lost eras before then. With this pragmatic and defensive approach to the game, we were able to put up fights against some of Asia's best. And while we were confronted by tons of heartbreak punching above our weight just like in the past, we also achieved milestones beyond our wildest of dreams. Park made players and fans alike proud to be Vietnamese. This Korean legend transcended not just Vietnamese football, but also Asian football, and his legacy will live on for the rest of time in the memories of millions of Vietnamese football fans. All I can really say now is thank you so much Park Hong So. We wish you all the best in your next journey, and hope to build upon what you have created here for us. With Park leaving, we are going to be getting a new coach, it's about 95% confirmed at this point. Philippe Troussier. He's currently Vietnam's U19s coach, so I think we're going in the right direction here. All I ask the Vietnamese Federation is to give him as much time as we did Park. As they say, you know, Rome can't be built in one day, and this Vietnamese footballing scene, it's got potential, but we have to be patient. Also a massive thank you for 150k, we're only 100k away from the funny pyrocynical meme. And also, thank you for allowing me to be able to do videos like this, because I know it's not going to be the best performing video, but I know people are going to be entertained and will watch this video. And that's really cool, being able to talk about such a niche tournament to a wide audience is just... I don't know, man. It's it's a special feeling. But anyways, though, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, El Favi, Milliway 9 Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Min Suomez, Aresan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Eyeshadow Ninja, Juan Leras, Miguel Munoz, Nguyen Dim Min Tang, Return Fire, Rory Byrne, Saw, Subscribe to Tendatum, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Trevor Batson, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Chris Amaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Paricio, Jordan Clavett, MX Weeb, Nish, Patrick Barley, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, follow me on Instagram if you like, follow me on TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.